हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार इन्वेस्टमेंट इन ईएलएसएस दैट इज इक्विटी लिंक सेविंग स्कीम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ टैक्स सेविंग पर्टिकुलरली फॉर दोज हु आर विशिंग टू एंश्योर क्लेमिंग द बेनिफिट ऑफ फुल एग्जम्शन फुल डिडक्शन प्रोवाइडेड अंडर सेक्शन एटीसी ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एक्ट नाइनटीन Now, in this regard, when somebody who is investing into ELSS, which is one of the important tax deduction options available under Section 80C, an investor should know that since July 2022, SEBI, which is the regulating authority of mutual funds and share market in India, has also come up with the concept of passive ELSS fund. So, as an investor. you should be able to understand what is a passive elss fund how it is different from the active elss fund if any and what are the advantages of it so my dear friends through today's video i will be trying to come out with all these points for the benefit of investors at large so that they can make a decision which really helps them to grow their capital in a better manner to begin with my dear friends i would like to tell you what are the types of mutual fund from tax saving perspective let's understand from a basic understanding perspective one you have mutual funds if i am bifurcating them from tax saving perspective which are called equity link saving scheme so unless some mutual fund scheme is specifically titled as equity link saving scheme because it comes with a lock in period of 3 year that is a very important feature so you have a lock in period of 3 year when you are investing in equity link saving scheme so when you are going into other scheme there is no lock in period that is the main substantial difference however equity link saving scheme are usually more towards the equity oriented mutual fund whereas other scheme may be a liquid fund may be a hybrid fund may be a balanced fund or all those kind of thing but as an investor you must understand this point that when you want to save the tax as well as invest in the mutual fund equity link saving scheme is the only option available to you however when you want to grow capital as well as other benefits like dividend etc you want to avail then other schemes of the mutual fund may also be exercised by you now let's understand what are the types of elss as i said in the beginning that there can be an active elss scheme or there can be a passive elss scheme now naturally your question to me would be that mr bhatia let us know what is an active elss then which was prevailing earlier even i give an example say for an example a mutual fund house like hdfc mutual fund icici kotak frankfin anything may have a fund balance of rupees 2 crore for which it has appointed mr x who is the so called fund manager who ensures that this 200 crore rupees of the corpus of that particular mutual fund scheme is invested into the securities who fetch the best return for the mutual fund investor so mr x may decide okay now i have to invest in a share and after he will be selling a share moving into b then after some time he may be selling b moving into c so on so he may keep on changing the portfolio according to his analysis of the market now when there is a case of passive elss what will happen this particular fund manager has no choice but to follow the relevant index now what index means here index means that there is a benchmark which is created say for example as on date if i talk about nifty 50 so nifty 50 has composition of 50 top stocks of india therefore they are into nifty 50 and this fund manager now will do what he will try to match the investment according to the nifty 50 composition only so he will not go beyond nifty 50 suppose he follows nifty 100 then he will not go beyond 100 securities which are mentioned in nifty 100 so here the option of the fund manager reduces and he has to simply follow that benchmark which has been set as the criteria for composition of passive elss then it will be the choice of the investor that is you to decide that okay which benchmark do you like the most do you like nifty 50 so that is your envisage that say you treat if nifty as on date is 18000 and down the line 3 year you envisage that okay let the nifty be 25000 this is my assumption or say 30000 whatever view you take 
So you can expect that in the passive ELSS wherein I am investing, if the Nifty will go from 18,000 to say 25,000 after 3 years, then my investment of 18,000 will also become probably 25,000 down the line 3 years. So this is the way an investor should make up in his mind when he is envisaging to invest into ELSS through a passive approach which is called passive ELSS. If I specifically deal with this question, what is P passive ELSS in a, a kind of understanding, I can write it. A passive ELSS simply follows its set benchmark and aim at matching the performance of such index subject to tracking error. Now, what is a tracking error? That could be one question which might have come in your mind. Say uh, in Nifty, there are certain 50 stocks. One of them is being removed and another one is being entered. So the fund manager would be also selling that share which is now being exit from nifty and would also be purchasing the another share so there may be some time gap in the introduction as well as the exit how it happens in nifty and how it happens in the relevant fund due to which there can be some performance gap which will be very 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 minor only so except that Usually, you can say 90%, 95%, the passive ELSS will be, able, will be able to match the track of the relevant index to which it basically follows, to which it adheres to. Now, I come to one more important discussion which you would be certainly interested in. What are the possible advantages of a passive ELSS? Yet, I have discussed few of them but would like to tell them here again or summarize them again here. A passive ELSS tries to match the performance of relevant benchmark. So rather than leaving the performance at the discretion of the fund manager, at the intelligence of the fund manager, which is a human involvement, you simply go by the tracking of the relevant index. So if somebody who is risk aversive, for him, the passive ELSS is better as compared to active ELSS. Because as a layman, when I invest into mutual fund, usually I don't see who is the fund manager of the relevant ELSS. So if I'm saying that, okay, I'm not bothered about the fund manager, whosoever it is, how I know his performance in past, it is better that I should straight away follow the benchmark. Then I will go into passive ELSS. Second, ELSS, which is passive ELSS, is not heavily dependent on the expertise and experience of the fund manager that I've already discussed. And reduced expense ratio is a very interesting feature in the passive ELSS. What is that, you may ask me. Say, usually in a active... ELSS scheme, the charges which are applied by the fund house from the investor are ranging from 1 to 2 percent. But in a passive ELSS, if I say that the fund house charges are round about not more than 0.5 percent, that means that ultimately over a long period of time when you invest in the mutual fund, which is a passive ELSS scheme, you will find that net NAV allocated to you is higher as compared to that which could be allocated in an active ELSS. So as an investor, this gives you an important understanding that reduced expensive ratio, expense ratio is a very important feature while you take decision to invest into passive ELSS. To conclude my dear friends, I am not here to just recommend you that, okay, you straight away go and invest into passive ELSS. I tried through this video to come up before you that, okay, as an investor, as a retail investor, you should be able to understand what is an active ELSS and what is a passive ELSS. The call is that of an investor. And I just provoke this thing that please ask your fund manager, please ask whosoever is your investment advisor that, okay, why should I invest in active ELSS? Why should I invest into passive ELSS? Show me the performance card of an active ELSS in past and what is the current performance of a passive ELSS so that you can make a wise decision to ensure that the growth of the capital is really taking there. So I hope you would have found this particular content useful. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.